Governor Eric Holcomb said today the May primary is now delayed until June 2nd. IU has now postponed commencement ceremonies. This on the same day we've learned an IU student living off campus tested positive. Meantime, next door, a contiguous state, Illinois, the governor issuing a stay-at-home order for its 13 million residents. Staggering numbers are coming out of Italy today. Its highest day-to-day -day rise in the number of deaths, 627. Unfortunately, we've now learned the death toll in our state just went up to three. The state health department a short time ago tells us a 60-year-old resident here in Marion County who'd been hospitalized has died. The number of positive cases now 70. This is partly because the number of people tested in Indiana has also gone up to 554. We do have a bit of relief to report tonight for the hundreds of hospitals and medical clinics all across the state of Indiana who up until today were running short on medical supplies. The National Guard rolled in today with truckloads of support. Rich Van Wyk says these arriving items are going to help treat the patients and also better protect the workers. Nobody ran out. There was nobody that called and said, I am totally out of masks, I'm totally out of gowns. But State Health Commissioner Dr. Chris Box said some hospitals were within a day of running out. The crucial medical supplies came from the national strategic stockpile that many states are turning to for help. We requested a very, very large amount, and we got a very small percentage of that, which is what every state is getting. From large warehouses, the medical supplies were shipped to Indiana, sorted, then taken by the Indiana National Guardsmen to more than 200 hospitals and other medical facilities. Even with the restocking effort, health care workers are being told to conserve and reuse masks, gowns, and other protective gear. The COVID-19 pandemic is stretching health care providers to their limits. The Indiana State Board of Health is considering calling retired doctors and nurses back to work. Obviously, I don't want my elderly physicians, um, which, of which I am one, so I don't want them on the front line taking care of patients, but I would love them to be doing telemedicine or backfilling in other places that we really do need the medical advice, but maybe they're not dealing directly with that COVID-19 patient. Box said that of the 79 Hoosiers sickened by the virus so far, some have recovered, but others remain seriously ill. Rich Van White, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. But well, we learned today that an IU Bloomington student is now tested positive for COVID-19. We learned this afternoon the student lives off campus and has been in self-isolation since March 13th. That student has mild symptoms. The Monroe County Health Department has tested a dozen students. Not all the results are back on those tests. They're telling us this is a local transmission because the student has not been out of the country. The health department will also follow up with the student to figure out when they can be released from isolation. And tonight at 5, we're following some breaking news out of Franklin County. That's in southeast Indiana. Four people are dead tonight. Two others are missing after their cars were swept away in flood water. The two vehicles were swept away in high water after a bridge there was partially washed out. Police at this hour have yet to release the names of those who are lost and those who remain missing right now. NBC News tonight, mourning the loss of a colleague. An audio technician who worked at 30 Rock in New York died after testing positive for COVID-19. Larry Edgeworth worked for the network for 25 years. Today, Lester Holt, Savannah Guthrie, Al Roker, and many, many others with the network all posted tributes to Larry today. He was 61. According to his wife, he did have other health conditions. One of the newest Marion County COVID-19 cases we now know involves a member of a well-known Indianapolis area church. Our Steve Jefferson is there tonight to explain why the church leaders say the risk is low as the patient starts on the road to recovery. Steve. The pastor of Barnes United Methodist Church got a call from the patient's wife who says her husband suddenly started showing signs of COVID-19. Uh, one day things can seem well, but the next day your whole life can be turned upside down. Reverend Charles Harrison has spent the last 24 hours comforting a church family dealing with the virus. It started when the husband, a man in his 50s, got sick. His wife didn't take any chances and took him to get checked out at the hospital. While awaiting COVID-19 test results, things got worse before they got better. Started to see some improvement the next day. Uh, I think by the evening of that day, the test results were back. 
uh, and the member uh, had uh, tested positive to, to the virus. Reverend Harrison sent this tweet to update church members and to let the public know what happened and why he doubts anyone at Barnes is at risk. Because he works on Sundays and uh, so there's no concern there, nor uh, has a family member been at the service uh, in the last month. This is video from last week's Sunday morning service. Now the church is undergoing a deep cleaning, has changed how they'll do service for the next four weeks, and warns people to take COVID-19 seriously. And don't take it lightly. You know, get tested uh, if you're showing signs of it. Even with the deep cleaning here at Barnes United Methodist Church, services will be only streamed online for the next few weeks. Steve Jefferson, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Well, U.S. airlines have canceled hundreds of flights now after a series of coronavirus cases involving air traffic control workers. That includes an air traffic control supervisor at Indy's Air Route Traffic Control Center. The FAA told us today the work areas were evacuated last night, but the center remains open right now and it's operational. Flights were rerouted, all part of a contingency plan. That center handles high-altitude cross-country flights. This happened as the FAA temporarily closed the tower at JFK in New York after a worker there tested positive. It reopened this morning. We want to make sure you're aware that you now officially have three more months to send in your tax returns. The federal, the Treasury Secretary today tweeted that the tax day is being moved from April 15th to July 15th. In a separate tweet, he said, if you're expecting a refund, make sure you go ahead and file right now. That way you can get your money. Two Indiana communities now going beyond what the governor is recommending to better contain the coronavirus. Yeah, tonight at 5, our Mary Mills is explaining what Madison County is now doing and the response it's getting. In Madison County, new restrictions to stop the spread of COVID-19. One, limiting travel to work and to get food and other essential supplies. Steph Grimes is with the health department. We understand it seems drastic. We just really want to try to, to limit disease. The county also asking many businesses to close through April 6th, including department stores, nail and hair salons, health clubs, and other places that don't sell food or home supplies. Retail parking lots like this one empty, with cars instead parked in driveways, all part of the new norm. I didn't think I'd ever see it come to anything like this, so it's scary. Still, those we talk to, mostly supportive. I feel like it's good for one nobody catches, so won't, won't nothing happen to nobody. How long can you go without having these places open? I'd go forever. I could live out in the country in a little hut somewhere and, you know. Some, though, upset about the new rules. He doesn't have the right to tell people when and where they can go and how they can go. Madison County now. In Don't matter. Outside this bank, a long line at the drive-thru now that the lobby's closed. I'm trying to put money in so I can get some bills paid. Liquor stores also asked to close their doors to walk-in business. This, this yeah. one still open Friday. It's one of nine the Indiana Liquor Group owns in Madison County. Calling to ask you about that. When we called the CEO, he told us they will be complying, leaving five locations open for curbside pickup only starting Saturday. Forever. Grimes says that's fine. As for retailers who ignore the new rules? And we can't enforce. I mean, there are too many. It's, it's impossible to do that. However, what I would say is that it's irresponsible, disrespectful, and perpetuating disease. And shame on them for putting the public at risk and, and, their, and their employees. Mary Mills, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. I want to let you know that Delaware County and the city of Muncie have now enacted a joint disaster emergency declarations. All barber shops, hair salons, nail salons, tattoo parlors, gyms, recreational sports facilities, indoor play areas, private clubs, and fraternal organizations are now closed there. All county and city offices are also closed.